The Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, has again ordered the withdrawal of police guards from politicians and other uh, VIPs. Mm. At a meeting with senior officers, the IGP says it is necessary to enable the force tackle emerging security challenges. Yeah, but he makes a concession that any organization that requires police protection and is qualified for such will be granted. It has become expedient for the Nigerian police force to streamline the deployment of its personnel attached to political and public office orders aim at enhancing effective and effective effective policing of the country. To this effect, a memo, a memo will soon be forwarded to the Office of the Commander-in-Chief for approval which will serve as a guideline or template for deployment of two VIPs, political and public office holders in the country. Accordingly, a directive for the withdrawal of all police officers deployed to VIPs, political and public office holders, shall be with immediate effect. These directives include business entrepreneurs, multinational companies, as well as corporate individuals. A tax force has been constituted at the force headquarters under the command of Assistant Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Adamu Nkwara, to ensure compliance to this directive. Why did you command commissioners of police to replicate the same at their various commands? However, Business entrepreneurs, multinational organizations, corporate individuals, and entities that require such services and are found to be worth it will be considered for special protection units of the Nigerian Police Force on application for revalidation through the state's commission of police where they are resident and domiciled. Thanks, Inspector General of Police, there, yes. Rahim Idris. Mm -hmm, indeed. Well, we have uh, uh, the CP, that's the Commissioner of Police, FCT, the Federal Capital Territory, uh, Sadiq Bello in Abuja studio. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, you have a lot on your plate right now with this directive coming from the IG of Police. But many Nigerians are saying, why should we take this directive really seriously? Because it's not the first time. As a matter of fact, um, Education Minister, former Education Minister, Obeza Kwesili said, look, let's, let's just... Let's just not bother about a directive that would not even be acted upon. You did not hear my question. Okay, my question really uh, simply is, why should we yes. take, yes, why should Nigerians uh, take this directive from the IG seriously uh, since it's not the first time such a directive has gone out? Well, um, I'm not sure about whether it's the first time or not, but uh, we should take it seriously because we are the ones to implement it, the commissioners of police and the various commands. And I can assure you, we take orders and directives from the Inspector General of Police to the last uh, uh, limit. He said with immediate effect, has it started? Uh, we had the CP of Lagos yesterday, uh, Edgar Limohimi, right here in our studios uh, during the 4 o'clock uh, news, and he said, he had started. Have you started effecting this directive? Uh, yes, there is uh, a time frame. The directive said uh, on or before the 27th of March uh, 2018. So what we try to do, uh, we try to be courteous uh, to our members of the public, first of all, by communicating to them. This is the new directive that um, we have to withdraw policemen attached uh, to such individuals and uh, corporate bodies and uh, uh, organizations that uh, on or before the 27th of March 2017, and uh, that we are going to definitely uh, implement. So I've already written to our members of the public and they've started responding. Those that have interest in uh, returning the services of policemen as the IG directed, they can apply to the Inspector General of Police through the Commissioner of Police. Okay, uh, make us understand, uh, when people, some people have police orderlies, give us a general overview. Who really qualifies, apart from public office holders, who really qualifies to have police orderlies? Okay, to have orderlies. Well, actually, we have uh, 
a list of uh, people that are qualified, which is a directive from first headquarters, uh, like the judges, as you mentioned, uh, senior government officials, any other person we have to assess uh, probably the reasons why we feel uh, he deserves uh, personal police services. And um, when we assess we feel he deserves it, then we can recommend to the Inspector General of Police uh, for such approval. Well, people are already saying this particular window where you say those who feel uh, they qualify to have police orderlies, individuals, companies, and all of that uh, can apply. And, uh, you know, if they feel that they are deserving to have police um, protection, does that not take us back to status quo? You know, um, is, what, what exactly is playing out here? Some people are already saying maybe police is looking for another way to... Uh, you know, get some funds into its uh, purse. I can hear you. It has ceased. I can hear you. I can okay, hear let you. me you, let you me may try to, and repeat yeah. <laughs> uh, my question. Uh, the IG, in coming out okay. with this directive, which okay, he yeah. said, the, the IG said with immediate effect this directive was supposed to be carried out. And then there is this window that allows for people to reapply uh, for, you know, police protection. That seems to uh, take us back to where we were before, before this directive in the first place. It has seized again. Wow. All right. Maybe let me come in this way. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, if you can hear me now, uh, maybe let me ask you another question so you can. Now, basically, what, qual what criteria qualifies anyone to apply, apart from the mm -hmm. public office holders, which you, which you uh, senior uh, public office holders that you mentioned earlier, what qualifies any other person who feels, because when you say who feels that he that needs police, police orderly or deserving, what qualifies them? What criteria? Uh, probably uh, the, the, the kind of job they do. Uh, maybe you talk about, uh, maybe let's say people in the oil industry, you know, the risk involved, especially in their places like the Niger Delta or their offices. If they can give us reasons, because we have to assess such reasons, uh, if it makes sense and we feel actually they deserve special uh, police service, that means they have to be attached with policemen. Otherwise, uh, we provide uh, general security for members of the public as we engage on patrols and other uh, uh, police strategies of a containing crime, uh, like a stop and search, visibility policing, and a lot more. So it has to be a peculiar situation that we have to take a look at to see uh, whether they merit it or not. Uh, in the first place, how did this happen that um, half of uh, the police force, about 300,000 in strength, we hear about 150 uh, deployed to other, uh, you know, individuals, companies and all of that. Who gave the permission in the first place? Uh, Education Minister Former, let me quote her again, actually said, how did the police, one of the most important institutions in any country, get so degraded in Nigeria, and it's the root of the many calamities that Nigeria is facing right now. How did it happen in the first place? Well, I, I wouldn't say how did it happen, but it is there uh, because the police are supposed to actually protect lives and properties of Nigerians. So as such, as I told you now, if uh, somebody feels that he, he needs maybe our police service is going to be made for a period of time. Then we can assess it. Maybe there's threats on his life, personally, maybe because of the kind of job he does, and maybe the kind of uh, services he offers, or maybe because of certain things. Then we take a look at that. Then a police service can be offered to such person, maybe for a certain period, subject to approval from appropriate uh, authorities. All right. Uh, reports credited to uh, former Inspector General of Police, Michael Kuro, who is the chairman of the uh, Police uh, Service Commission, says that uh, he, he said, in fact, let me, let me quote directly, that uh, the police lack the resources to withdraw personnel from private sectors or pro from private actors. In that, in that regard, if 
for someone who is strategically in the center of the police service, who knows the institution says that the police might lack the capacity, of what uh, uh, effect will this directive be? You say police may lack the capacity? I don't understand what you mean. Police may lack the capacity. A, 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 report, a, report, a report out there credited to the former Inspector General of Police and Chairman of the Police Service Commission uh, quoted him as saying that the police lacks the capacity to implement this, in, uh, this directive. directive. Well, I don't know uh, what that means, like the capacity. It's just to withdraw them in, give them the order, come back to the office, and await for that direction. So I don't know what capacity you are talking about. How easy would it be then for some of these young men to actually uh, obey this directive, seeing that many of them uh, may have been well treated by the organizations or individuals uh, where they actually um, operated, compared to whatever they'll be getting from the police. I mean, the issue of welfare, uh, funding, uh, and, and all of that has always been an issue with the Nigeria police. How easy will it be for, for you to get those people that have been well taken care of to come back into the mainstream of the police? I believe uh, that is not an issue. We are first and foremost police officers. Uh, we obey orders and directives from the Inspector General of Police. So whatever comes, whatever duty you perform, ad hoc duties you perform because you are a police officer, I believe that doesn't really matter. What matters is you are a police officer and you are subject to orders and to take orders and directives from the Inspector General of Police. So that is uh, what is most important. We must obey. All right. Uh, talking about taking orders from the Inspector General of Police, this is not the first time. In 2009, when Obona Onovo was uh, Inspector General of Police, mm -hmm. Hafiz Ringim followed, MD Yusuf followed, mm -hmm. Solomon Arasi and all of that, they gave this directive. And I believe you were in the force at that time too. From your assessment, what made those directives that time not to work or, or be followed to the letter? And what's going to be the difference between that one and the one now? Yeah, what I can tell you is, uh, by the grace of God, I am a commissioner of police right now, and um, I am going to obey orders and directive of the Inspector General of Police to the letter. And I'm quite sure all commissioners of police will do the same. And uh, so I don't see anything, uh, I don't see any problem with that, actually. This Are I you... can tell you. All right. Now... Maybe probably at that time I wasn't a commissioner of police. I wouldn't know what happened that time. But right now I'm telling you we are going to implement this order and directive. What are you telling your men, especially those that will be withdrawn from the companies, from this ad hoc, um, you know, uh, duties that they've been used to over time? Are you hearing anything from them since this directive came out from the IG? As I said earlier, it doesn't really matter. We are general duty officers. We can uh, walk anywhere. We can find ourselves today in administration, in operation, in investigation. You can find yourself anywhere in Nigeria, be it in the south, in the Niger Delta, in the northeast, anywhere. So it doesn't matter. It has to do with the exigencies of the job. So mm -hmm. we have signed, we are police officers, and we must uh, obey orders and directive. Our job is to provide, uh, to save life and secure, uh, to protect lives of uh, Nigerians and uh, protect lives and securities and ensure that uh, there is law and order in this country. And that is our main job, and we're ready to do that wherever it takes us to. So what are the changes we should expect if uh, this directive, or when this directive does go into uh, force? What should we begin to see uh, to show that, yes, this directive really is making a lot of difference? Yeah, uh, as a commissioner of police, uh, I will have more men at my disposal uh, to deploy uh, to more pressing issues, uh, like you know in Abuja, being the federal capital territory, uh, the police here were actually uh, overstretched. We have a lot of things to do, so I can now have more men to deploy uh, to the police, uh, divisional police uh, offices, so that we have more men on patrol, we have more uh, uh, visibility policing, uh, we have more men to, to carry other police duties that we do. 
Like you know in Abuja, we have a, a protest every day. We have to deploy men at the Unity Fountain. We have uh, court duties, special court cases that we have to cover. We have uh, conferences that are taking place in Abuja. We have a presidential movement. So we have men on patrol along the highways to take care of armed robbery on the highways, kidnappings. So I have more men now to deploy that will serve uh, uh, the general members of the public. All right, so, so would you say that uh, the police being overstretched is what warrants or what gave rise to the call to withdraw police officers of, as orderlies to in the, of VIPs? Yeah, probably we need more policemen uh, to perform core police duties uh, in the interest of the generality of Nigerians. So I believe that is one advantage uh, of what uh, uh, this uh, directive uh, has. Uh, because you look in Abuja, you see people, uh, they just build estates and they have a cubicle or a container. They need police uh, uh, outposts there. Everybody wants police service for himself. Well, right now at this level, we don't have such manpower to give a policeman to each and every individual or to estates. So I believe if we have men on patrols, uh, it will uh, cover, it will uh, provide more services to the generality of Nigerians. All right, let me give you a clearer picture of why I asked the question exactly as to what will change if this directive uh, comes in, uh, you know, goes into action. Uh, people are saying, uh, why is it not that the IG is focusing on the issue of funding, welfare for the police, equipping, and of course, training? Uh, this is something that is badly needed in the Nigeria police in a way that um, the general perception, the public perception of, about the police uh, really can change. Is it just to withdraw this men back into the police force and there's no improvement in their welfare, for example? Okay, I didn't get the last part of your question. However, as I said, uh, when you withdraw this men, uh, these, the commands will have uh, more policemen at their disposal uh, to deploy uh, for general police uh, uh, duties. The issue of funding, is something else. We are government, federal government police, so we are supposed to be funded by the uh, federal government. And I know we are in their need of such funds uh, to take care of uh, uh, general police needs. As you, as you mentioned, uh, in the welfare, we need police barracks. Uh, we need uh, logistics in terms of communication. We need patrol vehicles. Uh, in fact, as is done in other parts of the world, uh, the police were supposed to be kitted according to the weather. We should have a police uniform for the rainy season. We should have police uniform for Hamatan. We should have police uniform for the dry season. This is what is obtained in the other parts of the world. That will surely go a long way in uh, making us uh, have improved service delivery uh, to Nigerians. All right. Uh, out of about 400,000 police personnel in Nigeria, uh, the report sh said that uh, between 150,000 to 200,000 police officers serve as orderlies to VIPs. Now, if this police officers between 150,000 to 200 are withdrawn, and then there's a window for those who feel that they need to apply for these police officers, and they still apply, and they get the police back, wouldn't that just, just maintain the status quo of what we have now? I don't think, uh, I don't think so. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. We, we, we can hear you. I'm sorry, I didn't get the last part of your question. But what I am saying is that definitely not all the policemen that will be withdrawn that will find their way back. That I know. Because we have to use wisdom. We have to take a look at it critically to ensure that it's only those that actually need them that will be uh, get the police services, personal police services. So, oh, 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 all right. Now, the, the, uh, as a follow-up, we know that some of the police officers who have, been, um, who have become orderlies, they are used to a certain way of life, and they've been exposed to uh, some benefits from those that have been guarding and all of that, bringing them back into the police force. What strategy is the police putting in place to ensure that they abide by the standards that you are creating for them and maybe even ensure their welfare from what uh, Ngozi was saying earlier on? Well, that is a uh, uh, part of life. Um, I'm quite sure the government uh, will do something about uh, improving the welfare of the Nigeria police force. Uh, the Inspector General of Police has been hammering on that. 
And, uh, and I believe if uh, that gets to succeed, we have more funding for the police, definitely is going to uh, uh, make a positive impact of their, on, the, on our welfare and uh, on our, I believe, also training and uh, on even on our uh, uh, logistics. So all this put together, we surely uh, made an impact on our service delivery. So uh, they have first and foremost, they have to understand that they are police officers and um, they are ready to work anywhere as a general duty police officers. Whatever they get outside, well, I don't know, but what is legitimate is what is uh, their, uh, their take home pay. All right, all right, let's uh, just, uh, you know, stare away a bit from this particular issue. Um, not too long ago, when the IG, um, Ibrahim Idris, became IG, he actually gave a directive that checkpoints should be removed uh, from the highways. What exactly can you tell us about that situation now, that directive? Has it been followed to the letter? Yes, uh, I think it's not actually checkpoint, but roadblock. Roadblock, road yeah, thank as you. As far as FCT Police Command is concerned, mm -hmm. we have complied with that. Well, there may be need sometimes uh, to kind of have a, a checkpoint, what we call stop and search. Uh, mostly when we do that, uh, there may be a reason for that. Uh, probably there is uh, a report of a stolen vehicle or, or something, something that may necessitate that. Uh, like we do stop and search, especially at night. If you come to Abuja, in all nook and crannies of Abuja, it's part of the crime prevention strategies. Uh, you see policemen uh, conducting uh, stop and search. And uh, that we do, maybe it's a kind of checkpoint, if you may call it. Yes, if there's a need for it, we do that. But it's not that it's permanently there. Roadblock, no. Uh, what about the security challenges uh, facing Nigeria in Benue, in Taraba, in Nasarawa? in most parts of the country, if not every part of the country, especially when it comes to um, herdsmen attacks, uh, Boko Haram abductions and all of that. Uh, are you saying that uh, it, it, in the near future, it will be a thing of the past because you'll have more policemen deployed to these areas, the vulnerable areas? Yeah, exactly. And. Um uh, you know, when we try to uh, bring in members of the public, members of the community, so that they can come and work with the police uh, to solve the security challenges uh, within such community. And then I know now we are trying to improve on that in the spirit of what we call community policing. So when you bring members of the public on board, you let them know that they are important. And um, uh, we listen to them. They have, uh, have a role to play in the security of their community. I believe uh, this will surely go a long way uh, in reducing uh, such incidences of uh, insecurity in the many communities in Nigeria. What are you doing to weed out the bad eggs in the police? Because we've heard uh, stories about insider information where your men, talking about the police in general now, not your men specifically, uh, give out information to uh, Boko Haram, to terrorists, to kidnappers and all of that. And these people prepare for the police, even before you get there. What are you doing? Are there systems in place to actually weed out such bad eggs from the police? Yeah, of course. Uh, I didn't get the last part of your question, but uh, you talk about weeding out the bad eggs. Why not? We have uh, uh, disciplinary procedures. Uh, we're dealing with uh, uh, disciplinary offenses. So we know how to go about them. We have various uh, disciplinary uh, offenses, discreditable conduct is there, and um, so many others. So we know how to go about them. Uh, if it has to do with uh, uh, rank and file or inspectors, there are procedures. If it has to do with officers, uh, there are procedures as well. And I'm quite sure this is a new Nigeria police force. Uh, you should expect uh, a better police force by the grace of God. All right, okay. Commissioner of Police, uh, Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Sadiq Bello, thank you for talking to us on TVC Breakfast.